and welcome to Ag PhD. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. One of the things we're going to discuss on today's show is the potential for herbicide carryover going into 2020. We are very concerned based on last year's late applications and in some cases high use rates because we had lots of weeds to kill. So we'll talk about some of the products that we are especially worried about on today's show. Well, speaking of lots of weeds to kill in sunflower fields, there are always weeds out there to fight and it's a challenge to do so. We're going to talk about which herbicides could be most effective for you if you're planting sunflowers. Well, coming up later in the show, we have a Weed of the Week and an Iron Talk as always. But first, here's this week's Farm Basics. The corn we planted early February, we have all good emergence. So far, we can't find any condition that the wheels haven't worked. I can just say that. Closing the seed trench behind the planter is essential to establishing yields in the fall. Introducing the Germinator Closing Wheel from Farm Shop MFG. Designed and built by a farmer who is tired of seeing poor stands because of uneven emergence, the Germinator is here to give your crop the strong start it needs for maximum yield. For more information, visit us at farmshopmfg.com. During our Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk a little about road safety. And before we get into anything else, I would just say this. Whether you are a farmer or you are a non-farmer, you have a big stake in this. No one wants accidents. No one wants injuries. We all have to be careful and be respectful of each other while we're out on the roads. Well, when you see farmers coming down the road with tractors, chances are they're not driving 55. They're probably driving 15 or maybe 20. And that's fast when you're in a tractor pulling big equipment. But think about it this way, rather than worrying about, you know, I've got to follow this farmer and he's going to slow me down. That farmer is probably within a mile or two of home and he's got to get down the road just a little bit. And the other thing is he might be turning into a field approach rather than turning at the next intersection. So you really do have to be alert when you're driving around farmers. All right, so I will give you a couple of tips that our dad told us when we were driving farm equipment down the road. Number one, he said, make absolutely sure you are staying on the road. You are not to drive on the shoulder because he said, once you get off onto the shoulder, you've given up your rights to the road and that's not right. You have every right to be on the road and use the road, but just make sure obviously you are careful. Use your flashers, make sure all your lights are working, make sure your equipment is properly maintained so it can go down the road properly, but stay on the road, stay in your lane. The other thing that he told us is if you're ever coming up around farm equipment, if it's got a slow moving vehicle sign on it, and I didn't know this until he told me, he said it's the law, you've got to slow down to the speed of the slow moving vehicle before you go around it. So if it's going 15, you can't just zip around at 60 miles an hour. That is absolutely not safe. He said you got to slow down to 15. Now you can go around that vehicle. The other thing is you have to keep in mind, can the farmer see you? If you're pulled up very close behind a wagon or a large truck, the farmer may not be able to see you. Chances are if you can't see them, they probably can't see you either. So make sure you're keeping a safe distance between yourself and the farm equipment. Uh, that way the farmer knows you're there and he can, he can watch out for you just like you're watching out for him. One of the big things too to keep in mind is a lot of this equipment is only going one mile, two miles, five miles down the road. It's not going to be on the road very long, but nevertheless, accidents can happen in a split second. So that's why we would just really encourage you as we're getting into this busy planting and spraying season coming up that you use great caution, be really careful around farm equipment and just take a deep breath. Sometimes you don't have to go full speed. You don't have to get everywhere in two seconds. Just take a little bit of time and use great caution around all farm equipment. And you never know where farm equipment's going to pop up, especially if they have to spray for our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? Success isn't just about maintaining your operation, how you make out for the season, or how much you can get from each acre. It's about doing precisely what needs to be done to feed your crop and grow your legacy. All the way down to the last drop. Agroliquid Precision Crop Nutrition. Apply less, expect more. Find a retailer at agroliquid.com. Why do I farm? It's just something I've always wanted to do. 
something I've known since I was my daughter's age. When you farm, you have a responsibility to keep it growing, to look at a freshly planted field, a newborn calf, even your bottom line, then ask yourself, how do I help this grow? How can I make it even more productive? I ask myself these questions every day because no matter what I'm doing, I'm still a farmer. Where we have run the Soil Warrior, we have harvested the best corn we have ever harvested in the history of Renwood Farms. Now, I'm kind of always wanting to push the envelope to see what else I can do to help enhance that emergence. Their ride is so much smoother. Their seed placement is even better. Where we had our best emergence and we've had our best yields was where we ran the Soil Warrior. More choices, more money. With Bayer Plus Rewards, you choose from our broad portfolio of high-performance products. Earn more money on the eligible products that are right for your farm. And use our new portal to see your purchases, track your rewards, and decide how you want to use them. Visit MyBayerPlus.com to sign in and start earning. That's the advantage of more control in your hands. That's the plus. We started utilizing the dual react system this year. You can adjust your speed and it automatically adjusts your sprayer tips. So you can slow down and you aren't building up huge droplets or you can speed up and you're not throwing a mist that's drifting. Hypro, helping you spray better. Today on the show, we're gonna spend a little time talking about sunflower herbicides. And when I said a little bit of time, that's really all it's going to take because there unfortunately are not a lot of labeled herbicides for sunflower weed control. Here's one of the challenges though, Brian. You say, oh, there aren't so many herbicides. Well, that's fine, but let's talk about the herbicides there because they're good choices. How can we make them work? With sunflower, so often I talk to farmers that say, you know, I'm in a dry area of the country and I'm having a challenge making those pre-emerge herbicides work consistently on my farm. So let's talk about some of these pre-choices that we've got and what we can do in no-till and also in dry areas of the country to get the most activity out of them. All right, you only have a couple choices here. Are you gonna use a grass killer? Are you gonna use a broadleaf killer? Or are you gonna use both? The grass killers, Sonolan and Prowl are the best ones there. Prowl for no-till. We say Sonolan rather than Trifluralin for conventional till because you need every advantage you can get and Sonolan is better than Trifluralin in terms of weed control. So we would encourage you invest the extra money in Sonolan, but if you wanna go Trifluralin, you can. All those are what we call the yellows, Trifluralin, Sonolan, and Prowl. Then you've got Spartan. Well, Spartan is the same thing as Authority that's commonly used in soybeans. That's it. Now, when we talk about all those, they have very long residual. So if you're a sunflower producer in the northern part of the United States, like where we are, and you can see there's snow in the ground now, there was snow in the ground in October, we have very cold soils. I'm perfectly comfortable. If you want to put your Prowl out or your Sonolan or Trifluralin and your Spartan, in the fall, you don't even have to wait till spring. If you want the very best activity, the very best control, I'd put it out there way in advance if you have, like Darren said, very dry conditions. So if you're dry and cold, put it out in the fall. Otherwise, put it out a month before planting in the spring, and those products are absolutely going to hold till late in the season still because they have such tremendous residual. Here's the other issue that I see, Brian, is tillage. If you're doing tillage, don't bury the Spartan. When you put Spartan out on top of the ground, that's fine. It works really well because it's mainly targeting small seeded broadleaves and a little bit of grass control in the top half inch to inch of soil. So if we keep it very concentrated in that top half inch or inch, we're gonna get the most activity out of it. If we start tilling it under like we're doing with Sonolan, I get a little nervous about that, Brian. Don't get too deep with your tillage if you've got the Spartan out there up front. Yep, I agree, but I don't get too nervous about it because most people don't do deep tillage anymore. So as long as you're tilling at in the range of two to four inches deep, the herbicide's gonna be roughly half that depth most of the time, so one to two inches, and it will usually work fine. We have tilled in Authority or Spartan many times over the years, works just fine. But Darren's whole point is just keep it shallow and it will work the best. All right, so get that pre-emerge herbicide out, then choose the right seed. Now, if you've got a choice of a clear field variety, that could be a really good one for you because you can use Beyond 
post-emerge. Now, Beyond is a chemistry that we're very familiar with. Really, uh, uh, it's a product that we've been using in other crops as well. It's an ALS chemistry that controls broadleaves and also some grasses. So you can control some grass escapes, but by all means, make sure you have a sonalan or a prowl out up front because otherwise you're gonna have too much grass pressure for Beyond to do a very good job. Now, when it comes to those broadleaf weeds, if they're ALS resistant, you're just not gonna get them, but there are quite a few weeds that aren't. So this is a really useful chemistry, and let's face it, you don't really have any other choices. So if you can do a clear field variety, use the Beyond and get most of the weeds under control. Now, Darren said you don't have any other choices than clear field, but you do. Certainly you can go with conventional sunflowers, but you can also use express sun sunflowers. So you could spray express over the top of those sunflowers, but just like Darren said with Beyond, Express is that same type of chemistry. It's in that ALS chemical family. It's what we call the old sulfonyl urea group. And it's just not that great on a lot of weeds. It's certainly not as good as Beyond and it doesn't have the residual that Beyond does. Now, I, I will just say this. I don't like the ALS herbicides anymore because we have so much resistance. But to Darren's point, yes, there are certainly still some weeds that will control. It's just when it comes to sunflowers, we have no other herbicide options other than those if you use Clearfield Beyond. If you use Express Sun, Express. Other than that, there's nothing. That's why we talk so much about get both the yellow and the Spartan down. You have to have fantastic pre-emerge control because post-emerge, you have zero choices in conventional sunflowers. Now, Darren also mentioned grass. I'm not too worried about grass control with Beyond because you can throw some Clethodem in for two to three dollars an acre and that will kill all the grass in your field. Just make sure you're spraying that grass when it's relatively small so you preserve maximum yield. Last thing I'd say, Brian, is with both Express and Beyond, the adjuvants that you put in the tank with them make a huge difference. So make sure you're talking to your agronomist about your specific weather conditions and the specific varieties that you're planting to make sure that you can maximize the performance of those products with the right adjuvants. Well, adjuvants are important if you want good herbicide control, especially on our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? Make sure your farm equipment is season ready with an uptime inspection from your Titan Machinery service professionals. Titan Machinery's team of Case IH certified technicians has the knowledge and experience to find, correct, and prevent mechanical issues that could shut you down during the season. Your planting and harvest windows are short. For genuine Case IH parts and service, schedule an off-season uptime inspection at Titan Machinery today. Titan Machinery, your local Case IH dealer. Success isn't just about maintaining your operation, how you make out for the season, or how much you can get from each acre. It's about doing precisely what needs to be done to feed your crop and grow your legacy, all the way down to the last drop. AgroLiquid Precision Crop Nutrition. Apply less, expect more. Find a retailer at agroliquid.com. Challenging field conditions often make harvest difficult. Can your corn head handle it? The GTS X10 corn head from Agra US is a rugged, cost-effective alternative to heavier, more traditional heads. Constructed of durable yet lightweight aluminum, the X10 puts less strain on your combine without losing harvest effectiveness. And it is 40% lighter than traditional heads, reducing field compaction in those less than ideal conditions. For more information, give us a call at 8334-AGRA US. If you're looking to expand your farm's grain handling, you want everything to be fast and efficient. The Quick Belt from Norwood Sales is your all-around grain handling solution. Our conveyor-based system uses an 18-inch belt and a 10-inch tube, which minimizes seed damage while moving more than 10,000 bushels an hour. That's fast enough to fill a semi in six minutes. Plus, our hood is designed to gently direct the flow of grain straight down, keeping your crop in condition. Keep your grain and your farm moving with the Quick Belt from Norwood Sales. And then give it all away Find love Then give it all away
2019 was a very unusual year. It was wet, there was delayed planting, and in a lot of cases, farmers were using products at different times of the year than they might normally do so. So today we wanted to talk just a little bit about herbicide carryover and some of the risk we see going into 2020 and what you can do to minimize that risk. Oh man, Brian, you're bringing me down here. I thought 2019 was in the past, but you're saying last year's chemistry could hurt this year's crop. All right, I get it. We did have some of those situations pop up. Here's one that I think was a bad one in soybeans. We had a lot of late planted soybeans, which meant the beans were pretty small all the way into July and August, and we were still having pigweed escapes. Well, we got past the label on extend, and we got really late in the season. Growers were still putting out Reflex and Flexstar. Fomesafen would be the active ingredient. And that's got a big 10 month rotational restriction to corn. Well, if you're putting that out in August, that all of a sudden means you're probably not gonna be able to plant corn until June. So you're probably thinking right now, oh no, that could be a problem. Maybe I'm okay because I got all this extra rain. So what actually breaks down some of these chemistries? That's gotta be part of this discussion. Yeah, so rain absolutely can help a little bit, but that was to some degree offset by the fact that it was cold. When the weather is cold, then the bacteria that will normally break down herbicide are not as active and they don't break the herbicide down as quickly. Fall freeze up or <laughs> winter freeze up as you might refer to it as. I always call it fall freeze up because we're so cold in South Dakota. We are freezing up in the fall and we froze up especially early this year. Temperatures were below normal all through October, so where we might get additional breakdown in that month didn't happen. Okay, so here's the whole point. Yes, uh, there are many things that can break herbicide down, but really I number one look at heat. Number two, I'm going to look at moisture. We were above normal on moisture, but we were below normal on heat. I think that almost offsets. And so now we're looking at how much time is there until we have that rotation that we, we should be going to in the spring. When you're worried about this, when you say, ah, it's kind of questionable, whenever it's questionable, why do we want to take that extra risk? So my advice to you would be, look, if you're bumping up against that 10 months and you're not 100% positive that all the Flexstar or Reflex is gone from last year, just plant soybeans in there again, rather than plant some crop where you think you might have an injury issue. Well, we get questioned all the time about, will this hurt a cover crop? at the end of the season, a cover crop is not nearly as valuable as your primary crop and just a slight amount of carryover that could take 5% of your yield away without you ever even seeing big symptomology on the plants, that's possible, so we don't wanna take those risks. One other product family, Brian, that I'm a little concerned about is the HPPDs. We had corn getting planted in the upper Midwest into early June and all of a sudden, Guys are like, well, what am I going to do here? I'm going to put a pre-emerge out that's a complete pre because that's the only time I would be across the field for weed control. And what did they use? Heavy rates of HPPDs in early to mid-June. That scares me a little bit. We don't have near as much time to get those to break down. Another corn product that we always are worried about is atrazine. Atrazine does leach down through the soil, so more moisture is Better or worse, I don't know how you want to look at that. We hate atrazine in groundwater, but yes, atrazine probably leached out of the profile with all the rainfall we had. The other thing with atrazine, you really want to watch out if you have high pH soils, it carries over more commonly in high pH ground. A couple other products, Authority and Spartan. You may have used those in, we were talking earlier in the show about sunflowers, Spartan there, or Authority in soybeans. Those products have one of the longest half-lives of any herbicide that there is out there, 280 days. So it's going to last into the next year. The question is, are you going to plant a sensitive crop in there or not? And with later planting last year, chances are you're gonna have more authority or Spartan carrying over into the next year. Now we don't typically worry about corn or wheat or obviously soybeans, but if you're raising some other crop, be concerned about that. Well, I haven't seen those products carry over so much, Brian, but two that I really do see carry over are Tordon and Milestone. You want to be very cautious if you've sprayed those out on pasture ground and then you broke that ground and you're going to try and raise row crops in there this year. I'd be very concerned. You should be raising a grass crop out there or you're going to have some problems. The other thing that we've seen is with hay. If hay got bailed up and it had Tordon or Milestone sprayed, the cattle eat the hay. You have to watch where those cattle graze next because they could bring that out into your field too. 
All right, Darren wasn't specific about time. I would just tell you our old rule was one ounce of tore down is one year of carryover. So 10 ounces is 10 years. And I know you're going to say, well, that's crazy. It doesn't carry over that long. Maybe not in your area, but in our area where we're so cold, we really worry about that milestone. Not quite as much, but certainly it's possible for milestone to last three to five years. Tore down absolutely, though, can last five to maybe even 10 years to so be really careful. Well, I do want to be cautious coming out of 2019 that there could be some herbicide carryover if things got used at different times of the year or possibly some different products than you've worked with before. We do need herbicides, though, to control our weight of the week. We'll show you which ones work best coming up next. The Weed of the Week is brought to you by Corteva AgriScience, Agriculture Division of Dow DuPont. Finish the fight against tough weeds with the Enlist Weed Control System. Weeds are tough. But we're tougher. With unrivaled weed control. Reduced drift. And near zero volatility. So, who's tough now? <laughs> Weed of the Week is Eastern Black Nightshade. This one was a real nightmare for us, Brian, when we were younger. When we were in our teens, uh, we started seeing some black nightshade popping up on our farm, and Dad was raising soybeans for seed production. And you can't have any black nightshade in there at all. What happens is those berries, when they ripen, they burst at harvest time as you're hitting them with the combine. They smash, they smear around the soybean seed, and if that's the only thing that happened, it wouldn't be the worst thing. But even worse than that is they could gum up the combine and literally stop that combine. You don't want that to happen and you can't have those weeds in your seat. Well, the good news with Eastern Black Nightshade is we do have some products out there that will control it. For us on the farm with soybeans, Pursuit was the godsend. Pursuit is fantastic on it, especially if you put it in the soil, even at a half rate, we have found Pursuit is excellent. Now, Flexstar has some good activity, and I'd almost argue Flexstar is a better post-emerge product than Pursuit. I kind of like the Pursuit Pre. Fortunately, too, both products have residual because Black Nightshade comes up later in the year in many cases. So you can get the early control and the late control with both Pursuit and Flexstar. Yeah, so start with the three pre's as well. We do see some help on that from the Valor and Authority and Metribuzin components. Not so much help out of the Prowl or Trifluralin in that mix. On the corn side though, the pre's can be pretty valuable for you because we've got a lot of good choices there between Sure Start and Triple yep. Flex. I like them. Uh, I also like Verdict. That's got a lot of sharpen in it, which can give you some decent residual on nightshade too. Yep, post-emerge. Personally, I like status and a little bit of atrazine, but you know what? I could almost argue HPPDs oh, could HPPDs be better. are way better. <laughs> I, I like the HPPDs, and, and, and I would mix some atrazine in but, with them. Well, They've got decent amounts of residual. Too. That's the thing. The advantage is the HPPDs have much more residual than status. All right, when we look at wheat, we don't see a lot of black nightshade out in wheat, and we can control it fairly well with Husky post-emerge, but I would start off with Sharpen pre-emerge to help you out as well. Well, that's it for our Weed of the Week Eastern Black Nightshade, but stay tuned, Iron Talk is coming up next. Introducing the all-new Diamant Cornhead from Capello USA. With a revolutionary design, highly innovative for its class, we have painstakingly designed every component down to the smallest detail to maximize your harvest efficiency. This gives you unprecedented standards in operation and performance. For more information about this beast, available only in our new gray poly, call 855-CAPELLO or visit capellousa.com to find a dealer near you. Capello, wherever you are, we are. It's no secret that Mother Nature doesn't always cooperate with your schedule. Field conditions in recent years kept many from timely planting and fertilizing. And when you can't get your fertilizer applied, you lose thousands of dollars in yield potential. If you need flexibility in your fertility application timing, you need a drop tube system from CNR Supply. CNR drop tubes allow you to apply liquid nitrogen in season and place it exactly where your crop needs it. To learn more about low cost CNR drop tube solutions, visit crsupply.com. 
How much does your crop residue cost you? Over time, residue accumulates in your fields, building excess carbon levels and tying up your plant available nitrogen. Residue also traps P, K, and micros and can take years to naturally become available to your crops. This is because soil lacks the diverse microbial life needed to break it all down. With Decomp, you can naturally restore life to your soil and allow the release of valuable crop fertility. Learn more about Decomp at eggbio.solutions. More choices, more money. With Bayer Plus Rewards, you choose from our broad portfolio of high-performance products. Earn more money on the eligible products that are right for your farm. And use our new portal to see your purchases, track your rewards, and decide how you want to use them. Visit MyBayerPlus.com to sign in and start earning. That's the advantage of more control in your hands. That's the plus. Do you feel like there's never enough time to get everything done before planting? The window for spring work is quick and unforgiving. Give yourself the upper hand with the ProTail High Performance High Speed Disc. More and more farmers agree the ProTail is the right tool for spring field conditions and heavy residue management. Zero maintenance bearings, independent disc technology, oversized pins and bushings allow the ProTail to handle whatever field or conditions you can throw at it. Degelman High Performance Equipment. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. Why do I farm? It's just something I've always wanted to do. Something I've known since I was my daughter's age. When you farm, you have a responsibility to keep it growing. To look at a freshly planted field, a newborn calf, even your bottom line. Then ask yourself, how do I help this grow? How can I make it even more productive? I ask myself these questions every day. Because no matter what I'm doing, I'm still a farmer. does it take you to spray all of your acres? In today's Iron Talk, I'll share a tip that's greatly improved the efficiency of our sprayer and added more hours of free time to the summer as well. There are three things that take time with your sprayer. Number one, your actual time spraying the fields. Number two, your drive time between fields. And number three, your time filling the sprayer. Now, speeding up the sprayer in the field leads to poor performance and more resprays, which take a ton of time. Don't do that. Driving even faster between the fields can be dangerous as well, so don't do that either. The answer to speeding up operations is filling the sprayer faster. Here's how. First, if you haven't already, upgrade to 3-inch plumbing to maximize flow. Then, get a high-flow transfer pump. Pumps capable of 300 gallon per minute flow rates will reduce fill time and allow you to load twice as fast as other 3-inch pumps. Next, integrate Pentair Hypro Clean Load Max onto your nurse trailer to pre-measure multiple formulas to be loaded. Add chemical eductors large enough to hold measured premixed amounts of chemical. Premix matches ensure that you're not wasting time pouring chemicals, and stacking them in sequence allows for fast multi-formula refills. One of the things I really like about this particular system is the ProClean feature that sprays the entire inside of the chemical containers with water to ensure no chemical waste and to support environmentally responsible disposal of chemical containers. If you want to speed up spraying on your farm, the best way to do it is by upgrading your nurse trailer to load faster and more efficiently. That's all for today's Iron Talk, and now back to the show. That's all the time we have for today's show, but if you're looking for more agronomy information, we'd encourage you to check out the Ag PhD radio show. We're on Sirius XM channel 147 at 2 p.m. Central each weekday. And don't miss the next Ag PhD TV show. We'll have another Weed of the Week, Farm Basics, Iron Talk, and a whole lot more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD.